Hello people, I'm Neurocomic Gamer. Today I'm going to be talking about whether or not DC should get rid of Zack Snyder because right now he's helming their DC Cinematic Universe, well, the DC Expanded Universe, and a lot of people feel like he should be let go after Batman v Superman because he's not, because people don't think he's a good storyteller and things like that. So, first off, there are going to be spoilers for Batman v Superman in this video, so there's your warning. If you want, don't want the movie to be spoiled for you, leave now. Anyways, let's talk about this. So, Batman v Superman, a lot of people loved it, a lot of people hate it, this isn't a review, but I'm on the side of, uh, it was a garbled mess to me. There was way too much going on, it was a lot like Iron Man 2, and, um, just like with Iron Man 2, I don't blame Jon Favreau, and with this, I don't blame Zack Snyder for all of it. There are some things that obviously he screwed up on, but I don't blame him. I feel like a good amount of it was the studio. Again, with Iron Man 2, uh, they gave Jon Favreau hardly any time to make that movie, and they were pushing him to put stuff in there for the Avengers, and there was just way too much, and that movie was terrible. Well, with this movie, they pushed a lot of stuff as well and I feel like Snyder does really good when he can focus on things because I'm a Zack Snyder fan I've seen four of his movies and I like I love three of them uh, but this was the first Zack Snyder movie that I've seen that I did not like granted I haven't seen every single movie he's done but out of the movies I've had Batman that I've seen Batman v Superman is the only one that I don't like I feel like there was way too much going on because he tried to borrow stuff from Lex Luthor Man of Steel Death of Superman Dark Knight Returns and he also tried to throw in well again he's not the writer but he does have input on this and he does have oversight but yeah he doesn't write the movies um so but you know he is in control of some things uh, but I feel like there's way too much in this movie for him to do he's not a good director when it comes to covering so many things like that uh because you know they had their own original stuff they threw in there like Wonder Woman looking for a picture you had Batman constantly tripping balls he was just nightmares all the time you also had Lex Luthor going around and trying to shove Jolly Ranchers in senators mouths and trying to portray uh, persuade the senator you had Scoot McNary's character who to me was one of the worst parts of the movie and I felt I really felt like he could should have been taken out you also had Lois Lane going around doing her thing trying to figure out you know what's going on those people that like those contract killers or whatever that killed uh, all those people over there and that were trying to frame it on Superman even though why would Superman shoot people with bullets it makes no sense but my point is, that's a lot of stuff to cover in one movie, even in two and a half hours. Two and a half hours is a long running time for a movie. But with so much stuff, it gets to where nothing is done greatly. Like, I feel like the best things that Snyder did in this movie was he he stayed close to The Dark Knight Returns more than anything. Because Death of Superman was rushed in like the last 15 minutes and it was done horribly. It was executed terribly. Uh, just everything done without like Doomsday's origin was awful. Uh, the way Superman was killed, the way Superman killed Doomsday. Because I mean in the comic one of the great parts about Doomsday is the fact that he is quite literally a job for Superman. No one can stop him but Superman. That includes Wonder Woman. She's been, gotten the crap beaten out of her by Doomsday in the comics before. And Superman is the only one that can stop him. And I love that. It makes him such an interesting and cool villain, but in this, anyone, even Batman could have shoved that kryptonite uh, into Doomsday's heart, and it was just, I mean, granted, it would have been really hard for Batman, but Superman literally could have just tossed it to Wonder Woman and thrown it in there, uh, and she could have just, you know, stabbed Doomsday with it, but anyways, uh, that's just one of the points, that that is a huge Superman story that got thrown in there and got shortchanged, and it was very disappointing when a story like that deserves its own movie. Dark Knight Returns, uh, the Batman v Superman fight was very close to it, you had a lot of nods to it, the suit was obviously Dark Knight Returns, the armor and the non-armored looked a lot like the Dark Knight Returns. The only real difference was like the underwear and the fact that Ben Affleck is not extremely fat or extremely old like the uh, Batman in Dark Knight Returns. Um, we got some other references to Dark Knight Returns like Batman not being too afraid to kill but at the same time not not going all out of his way to kill people like if he really wanted to he could have just had a gun strapped to his belt and just gone on a murder spree but he never did that in Dark Knight Returns he did kill it wasn't very often but he did shoot that one guy Zack Snyder's not wrong um, but granted he didn't go around killing near as many people as he did in this movie in the Dark Knight Returns but also, as the character of Batman in The Dark Knight Returns, I could see him killing people a lot because that dude was crazy. And so, as far as Dark Knight Returns go, he did the best job with adapting that, but everything else, not so much. Like, Lex Luthor Man of Steel, the aspect they took from that was in that comic, uh, Lex Luthor sets up a fight between Batman and Superman, and to me, that was also done very poorly in this movie. It didn't really seem like Lex set up the fight at all, but he was trying to and just failed, and it turned out it was just like, it seemed kind of like he jumped in there, like they were going to fight anyways, but then he jumps in and he's like, oh, I'll cap I'll capture his mom. 
And that'll cause him to fight. And it was just, and that's another stupid scenario because Superman can find Lois wherever she's at, but he can't find his mother. And I mean, Superman could have gotten there and taken them all out before they could have killed her because Batman did. Batman went, took them all out. It took him like 10 minutes to do so. And that guy just sat in the room when he heard his guy screaming, getting murdered by Batman. But he's like, nah, I'm not going to kill her. I'll just wait. So Superman could have gone on, done it in like a quarter of the time and taken them all out and saved his mother. He didn't need help from Batman. But anyways, my point is that Zack Snyder needs to focus on stuff. He's a great director when he can focus on something, when he has a story that he can focus on. For instance, Man of Steel. It was mainly Superman Earth 1 Volume 1. Uh, if you've read that book, you know that they are very similar, but there are some elements from other comics in there, like there's a scene that's basically ripped straight out of Secret Origin, which is a scene where he's like, you know, uh, you are my son. The scene, the very emotional scene with Jonathan Kent and Clark Kent. Uh, there, it's a great scene. You also have some stuff from like Birthright, like, you know, that S, S means hope. But for the most part, it was Earth 1, and it had a focused story. You had Zod doing his thing, and Superman doing his thing, and Lois doing her thing. That's only three storylines, and Lois's and Superman's intertwined. So it's basically just two things that you got to follow. With Batman v Superman, there were a million different things. And then if you um, want to look at something else, look at Watchmen. While there were a lot of different characters in it, all he had to do was follow one thing from the source material. All he had was one graphic novel to follow for the source material, and that was Watchmen, and he took it, like, he, he did great with it. He took so much stuff from the comics. When it, Like, if he was lost or anything, he'd be like, okay, read the comic, like this. okay, let's just adapt that to the screen. It was very simple, because he had something very narrow to follow. He didn't have to go and, like, r read a million different comics, be like, oh, okay, add this, add this, and then this, and then Doomsday comes in the last 15 minutes, and uh, Superman will kill him, and Superman will die, and then uh, we'll give a tease that Superman's actually still alive. Boom. No, in Watchmen, he just had to follow what the comic book did. It was All the work was basically already done for him. I have not read the comic book for 300, but I did watch the movie, and I love it. I think it's one of Snyder's best movies. It's really good. And again, that's another thing where he only had to follow one book, and he did a great job. Uh, so Zack Snyder, when he has a story he can focus on, he's a great director. The dude knows how to make awesome fight scenes and make things look really pretty. But when you give him scatterbrain things, like scatterbrain storylines to work with, like Batman v Superman, he doesn't have anything to focus on, and he just ends up not doing so well at telling the story. I think uh, Zack Snyder is not the best storyteller out there, but he's not a bad storyteller. Like, he's proven with Watchmen 300 Man of Steel. He can tell some good stories. It's just the script writers that they get, they need to get writers that can match Snyder, writers that can give him a story he can focus on. So, no, I don't blame Snyder for this. I do blame him for some of the things, because some of the things were stupid, and it's things that he could have changed. But I don't think they should drop him. I think they got a good pick with Snyder. I think he's a good guy to lead the DC Expanded Universe. They just need to give him focus, something he can center in on. But anyways, those are just my two cents on Zack Snyder. He's made some great movies. He's made a really bad movie. But uh, those are just my thoughts. Please let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of Zack Snyder? Do you think DC should keep him? Do you think they should can him? Do you think that he's a good director, a bad director, a great director, an okay director? Please let me know. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like.